you jib a jab, bamboos on new canoes, all pippity pop she called. You jib a jab, bamboos on new canoes, all pippity pop she called. I mean, you keep on talking, but you don't know where to turn it off. Welcome to the weekend. I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute. You're watching Independent Thinking. Colorado is one of about 17 states that has the initiative process, which allows you and I to put something directly on the ballot if enough of us want to get it on the ballot. Some people want to change that. Some people want to keep it that way to find out what's going on. We want to talk to our friends at Common Cause. Yes, my good friends <laughs> at Common Cause. Elena Nunez, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. And from the Denver Post editorial board, Alicia Codwell, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right. Uh, let's lay out, I think a lot of people don't understand why Colorado is different than a lot of other states. And in the East, back when we had good old fashioned republic government, that is you hire somebody to represent you, uh, you really couldn't change the constitution or the laws. Here in Colorado and a lot of western states, when we became a state, we realized, wait a second, we don't trust politicians that much, and, and we put in the initiative and referendum process. The difference between that initiatives, people put on the ballot, referenda, the government puts on the ballot and we get to decide. All, all in all, is, is the idea of an initiative process good for government, good for um, the state of Colorado, or is it bad? Before well, we get into the specifics. You know, it's incredibly important. The initiative process is a safety valve for the voters so that if there's an issue that the legislature doesn't address or doesn't address adequately, the voters have an opportunity to put that issue before their fellow voters and make a decision about it. So it's been incredibly good for us over the years. And here in Colorado, the state constitution basically says, we the people are also the legislature. Correct. Which is so that they are our representatives, but we also reserve the right to change the laws, both mm -hmm. state statute and, and constitutional changes. We'll get into that uh, as well. There's some people say this initiative process, any initiative process, is uh, anti-Republican, small L, Repu uh, small R Republican, and that we hire these guys to go down to the Gold Dome and take care of business. We shouldn't muck with what they do because they know best, and citizens shouldn't shouldn't get involved. What's what's your thought? Well, uh, you know, the Colorado Constitution makes it makes a point of of reserving the right of people to petition um, uh, to to put initiatives on the ballot, and you know that's part of the founding of the operating manual of this state. So, you know, yeah, there are some people who would rather have strictly. Um, elected representative government but that's not that's not the roadmap that's laid out for us in the constitution and i think sometimes though you, you know the balance can shift too much can shift too much um, in either direction well just, just give me an idea ideolog ideologically is it good to have what Elena calls it a safety valve where people can come up and say wait a second we want to put a limitation we want to change laws you guys aren't doing it so we're going to do it in theory, is that a good thing to have? Absolutely, and I, I think I think though there is a big distinction, and I know you want to get to this later, between amending the Constitution and passing um, laws, people passing laws, putting you know potential laws on the ballot. There are some issues that that really do belong in the Constitution, and there are others that are just more effectively handled for all kinds of reasons um, through the amending state statute process. And I, I, I agree with you, but let, 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 let's take a look at the, the larger issue. The federal government has a way to amend the Constitution, mm -hmm. but the only way that's going to happen is through elected representatives. That is, the, our elected representatives in mm -hmm. Washington need to say, we want to put this forward right. to the states, and then our state legislators that we elect have to agree to it. Three-fourths of the states have to say, um, this is good, we're going to change the law. And because of that, it's impossible to get a lot of those limits we want to see. Whether you like this or not, there are certain things Politicians will never do to themselves. Term limits being a perfect example. If you like term limits or hate term limits, no politician will pass term limits when they're in office because they're limiting their job. You know, um, it, they'll do it to the to the president, <laughs> and that's what they did through right. through uh, uh, the constitutional change. But they won't do it to themselves. Um, it's too bad, I think, that the feds don't have some sort of amendment process where we can get involved as well. Well, I, I would agree, and I would say I think that you're exactly right. It's That's the exact problem. If it's an issue that affects legislators, they're much less likely to take it on themselves. And that's why we need a safety valve. We need the initiative process, whether it's at the federal level or at the state level. And I, I would assume you would agree, even if you don't like term limits or whatever it is, these guys don't want to limit themselves. For for me, it's it's the Taxpayer Bill of Rights. There's no reason in the world a politician would say, would put a spending limit on themselves, because it's going to get them in trouble with their special interests that, that lean on them. 
And so without that safety valve, we would never have something like, like the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, which I, I know you're a big fan of personally. I am a big fan of Tabor personally. Um, n uh, it's not true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think you're right, though. It, there, there are, it's very difficult to get um, politicians to do something that's going to, to curb their power or you know, limit their pay or limit their time in office. Um, you know, but the, the U.S. Constitution is what it is. I don't know that you're going to get them to an approve an amendment that would <laughs> allow them to, you know, allow people to take away their, their power and money. That's too bad. All right, yeah. bring, bring it to Colorado. You bring up this point that there is a difference between statutory changes and uh, constitutional change. Let, right. Let's lay this out for people who don't quite get it. Most people think the law is the law is the law, but actually there's, there's two different laws in Colorado. Well, why don't you lay that out for us? Well, the, the Constitution is the, you know, the operating manual, as it's been described, for government, how government runs. Um, it lays out the duties and responsibilities, the terms, um, even in, in in, in great degree, uh, how government ought to run. Um, the body of state statutes are, are typically the laws that we all think of as, you know, you can't do this, you can do this, you ought to do this sort of thing. And all right, so in other, in other words, we might have a, um, the owner's manual, the state constitution that says we're going to have a legislature that's going to be a house that's right. and a senate, there's going to be a governor's office, they're going to make laws. But those laws might be you can't buy booze on Saturday or Sunday, and the legislature will argue whether or not you can you can have booze on Saturday or Sunday and pass a law. We could put it in the Constitution, but what you're saying is this this should be the operations manual, very similar to the federal Constitution, and shouldn't be mucked up with lots of little things. Correct. Uh, the, the detail of how um, of how these bodies ought to operate, or or the uh, laws should be very detailed. Um, like you say, you can't buy booze on Sunday, or but to you know to the broader principles of how government ought to work should be in the Constitution. And, and there's there's another part of this, which is the Constitution's harder to change. That is, you have to go right. to the people of Colorado and ask them for a vote to change the operating manual. When it comes to statutory changes, the laws, right. the hundred people down under the gold dome and the governor can change those laws anytime they want. Right, and that's the problem we've seen in the past. I mean, we've seen more people choosing to go the constitutional amendment route in the last 15 years because frankly, the legislature hasn't had a great track record of respecting the wish of the, of the voters. Um, Common Cause, we worked on Amendment 15 back in 1996. That was campaign finance reform. And we, the Independence Institute, sued over campaign yes. finance reform and, yes. and won. In part. But then the legislature took the ruling and went much further in terms of repealing the law, which might have made the Independence Institute happy, but for the 66% of voters in Common Cause who supported the bill, we thought they went too far. Listen, <laughs> if Independence Institute is happy, Everybody's had it. <laughs> Let's, but, but the point being that back in the in, uh, uh, mid-90s, right. you, you said, we want to change campaign finance laws. Right. Now, a perfect example that politicians don't want to change campaign finance laws because the way they're in office, the campaign finance laws must have worked for them right. at some level. You said, no, this isn't, isn't good policy. And you went to the people. Put you, it in statute. Put, and you put it in statute. Yes. And the difference being when you put it in statute through the initiative process, those politicians get to change it. Correct. And that's why people want to put things in, in, in the Constitution so it doesn't get changed like that. Completely understand. And that was one of, um, one of the, the good points, I think, about Ref O in 2008, which failed um, before voters, is that it forbid um, politicians from putting their hands on those voter passed um, statutory amendments, uh, putting their hands on them for five years. That was uh, one of the, the very good details of REFO that are not in um, the measure that we're, we're about to talk about, but I think ought to be. You know, I think there ought to be some prohibitions. We need to, I think legislators need to respect um, the actions of voters 